What's up, Wolverines? I'm Chris Bio. And I'm Jake Camayo, and here's your news for today. It's finally here. Our Balen tradition nears as it will be the first Dombala in two years. As we get closer to the festival, we go live outside on the grounds with Matthew Barturin. Thanks, guys. Yeah, behind me, we can see the setup for the uh, 2022 Dombala. Should be a very exciting weekend for the Balen community. Dombala is one of the most popular traditions in Balen's history. It invites the whole community for delicious food and rides for everyone to enjoy and is one of the best times of the year for the Belen community. Well, we're very excited actually that Tombola is happening because last year we couldn't have it. So our last Tombola was in 2020. This is our 53rd Tombola in Miami. We date back all the way from Cuba. The theme is que sigue la tradición. Basically, the tradition of Tombola has always been that it is a community building event. We raise money for the financial assistance program and yes, that is very important, but more important is the fact that the parents and teachers and students get to come together and, and work together and work, you know, for the school, give back a little bit of what is given to them. The Tombola will be kicked off with a very exciting culinary extravaganza. The culinary extravaganza is going to take place here at Belen on February 4th from 7 to 12 midnight. We will have various restaurants and vendors from Miami. Um, the Belen community will come together to enjoy food, drinks, and a lot of dancing, music, and having a good time. This event also brings a lot of excitement from students of all ages and alumni as well. Well, I'm excited because of Don Bela because it's my uh, first year as a Belen student. I'm ready to help out and it's probably going to be a better experience because I'm going to know more people there. I love Tombala because it reminds me of growing up, going to Tombala with my family, my grandparents, and when I was a student at Belen. This amazing event comes back this weekend, so be sure to stop on by. That's all for me, now Ryan back to Ford you guys. Ryan Ford is looking to sue three NFL teams, including the Miami Dolphins, New York Giants, and Denver Broncos for racial discrimination in the hiring process. Regarding the Dolphins case, Flores claimed that the owner Steven Ross paid him $100,000 for every single loss in the 2019 season for tanking purposes. That violates the NFL's tampering rules. Flores also claimed he was invited to an impromptu meeting on a yacht with owner Steven Ross. Once Flores arrived on the yacht, he was informed that soon-to-be free agent quarterback Tom Brady would be at the meeting. Flores then refused to stay and left. This led to Steven Ross treating him with disdain and thinking Flores was a difficult person to work with. Flores ended up being fired after a 9-8 season where he was just one game shy from the making the playoffs. Coach Flores also claimed the Giants only interviewed him for their head coaching vacancy to comply with the NFL's Rooney Rule, which requires the NFL teams to interview at least two minority ca candidates for coaching jobs. Flores also says that the Giants had the coaching job already lined up for Brian Dabble who was the former offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. According to Brian Flores, Bill Belichick sent him a, a series of text messages, and in those texts, Bill Belichick told Flores that he heard from Buffalo and New York that he was their guy. Flores then asked Belichick to come clarify whether he meant to talk to him or Brian Dabble, who was also in the running for the Giants job. Belichick acknowledged his error and informed him that the Giants wanted Dabble. Flores had a similar situation with the Broncos as well. When the Broncos general manager, John Elway, and other executives arrived for the head coach interview with Flores, it appeared as if they were hungover and drinking prior to the meeting. In the lawsuit, Flores filed he wants the NFL to increase the influence of black individuals in hiring, increase the objectivity of hiring and terminating GMs, head coaches and coordinators, and a few other points which would give African Americans coaches a better chance in the NFL. This weekend, 20 of our Belen Model UN delegates, led by senior Santiago Elizondo, participated in the American University Model United Nations Conference, Friday evening through Sunday afternoon. United Nations is an academic club where students act as delegates from the UN to solve world issues, whether it's combating climate change, figuring out agriculture, stopping human trafficking, uh, reducing the idea of terrorism. They work together collaboratively, collaboratively with other countries around the world to solve those issues. This past weekend, 20 of our 60 delegates participated at American University, which is our top-notch competition, and came out with outstanding delegation. So hats off to our 11 delegates and the rest of our other nine who did swimmingly well. One. Yesterday, as you started the month, it also marked Chinese New Year. We celebrate with the cultural childhood games and a staple in their food industry, Kung Pao Chicken for lunch. What's up, Wolverines? I'm 
Chinese New Year is like a celebration of the first lunar month of the, the lunar calendar. And in China, they celebrate it. It's like a big festival. It's really important for Chinese culture. And in the land, we celebrate it to like obviously honor Chinese New Year. And you get to learn about Chinese culture, different customs, and traditions. What's up, Warriors? I'm Ben Romanach, and here's your sports outlook for the week. Your varsity soccer team held their district semifinals here at home last night with a score of 9-0 against South Miami. They, took, they look to take home the district championship tomorrow night against Terra Environmental. Make sure to come and support your Wolverines. The past two nights, the Wolverine basketball team has gone 2-0 in their matchups during the private school showdown against LaSalle and Divine Savior, most recently with a score of 48-41. Leading scorers for the Wolverines were Adrian Delgado with 12 points, Javi Rizal and Sante Rizzi accumulating 11, and David Ortiz with 7. Last night, the Miami Heat went head-to-head -head against the Raptors and took a hard loss of 110-106, the third loss in a row. Last night, the Panthers faced off against the Rangers at New York and also came up short with a score of 5-2. Both Miami teams taking losses at the beginning of the week looking to turn around now. Many of you may know by now, but the GOAT Tom Brady has officially announced his retirement with seven rings under his belt in 22 years. That's all for your sports. Now back to the guys at the desk. Thanks, Ben. Remember to follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Remember to stay safe and stay golden, Wolverines.